Hey guys, today I'm going to show you how to make a jig so you can make this kind of geometric patterns. Now, these two trivets that I have here, they only utilizes one shape only, and that is the diamond shape. I'm gonna show you how to make the jig for it. But if we go here at my table, if we go here at my table, you will see that I have this other project I'm working on now. And here, there are a few other shapes that in it. There is, of course, the diamonds that creates the stars, and then we have the diamonds all around it. But then the other shapes that are there, they're just two extra shapes, and this one's over here. So this whole pattern that I did here, I utilize three shapes only, which is these three shapes, and I'm gonna show you exactly how to make the jig to cut the shapes, the dimensions, and everything else. If we move over here, you will see, using these three shapes, you can do all kinds of patterns um, again, this is the three shapes, and I just put together a little sample of patterns you can create. I mean, you know, use your imagination. You can do all kinds of cool stuff with it. Three shapes only, all kinds of patterns. Now, making this jig, it doesn't take long at all. It only takes about 10 minutes, but make sure you take your time so you can really make sure that everything is square and everything is at the precise angle, because if you don't do it right, then your shapes are not going to go together perfectly, and you will have gaps. So, I will start with a scrap piece of plywood, and the dimensions for this, let's see, mine is 18 by around 12 and a half, and you don't need it that big, it could be smaller, but I like this one because it's rectangular, and I'm going to show you why. The one I did in class when I learned how to make this jig, was 12 by 12, which it worked, but I think this will be a better size for it. Let's go to the table saw. I hope you can see here. We are at the table saw, and I have my scrap of plywood, and um, I cut a scrap piece of material. This is oak, and it's a one by four material, and I cut an angle at 30 degree. To cut my angle at 30 degree, I just use my miter saw. I set it up at 30 degree, and then I just cut a piece like this. Now back to our jig. Um, I wanna be able to cut these pieces uh, with my blade exactly at 90 degrees because I don't wanna have to tilt the blade every time I wanna build something like this. And because of that, all the cuts on these uh, shapes, these geometric shapes, they are all at 30 degrees. So I need to build a sled or a jig that will allow me to cut with my blade at 90 degrees, but make cuts at 30 degrees. So to do that, I'll have to glue a piece of material, something like this. But let's make sure we set it exactly at 30 degree angle. Now, when it comes to making sure that this board is exactly at 30 degree angle, you can use two tools. You can have one of these uh, triangle, this is a 60, a 30, 60, 90 degrees, and uh, I can put one of this in the description below if you're interested in buying one. And what you can do, you can line it up with the edges of your board, and then put your material like there and glue it in place. And that will be very accurate, that's what we did in class when we built it. Now for me, I think I will use one of these digital angle uh, ruler because I think it's going to be a little bit more exact. So you see we are exactly at zero right now, it's completely closed, and I'm going to open it until it says 30. And then lock it down. All right, so now our ruler is locked at 30 degrees. I don't know if you can see it or not. And what I need to do is line it up with the bottom of my plywood. Now I made sure that my edges are square. So I took a square and made sure that everything is square. And then I'm going to line this up with the edge of my material. And I'm gonna slide it off my working table like this. And I'm gonna use two clamps to temporarily clamp it on so it doesn't move on me. Make sure it's really flush. You do not wanna be off not even a half a degree or anything really. 
So everything has to be completely precise. I'm running my finger to make sure I'm flush. And I am. It's looking good. We are still at 30 degrees. I hope you can see that. And now I will take my board and when I will glue it, I'll make sure I leave a tiny little bit of room over here just so I don't go over it because I don't want to uh, affect the fence because we will have to put this right against the fence. So let me get some CA glue. So I'll put some CA glue on this board. Make sure my ruler did not move and we're still flush. Everything is good. I'm going to put some TA over here. And then make sure I put this right next to my ruler, biting against it. Without pushing too hard, I don't want to move the ruler and close it up. Just like that. Press down for a few seconds. And that should be locked in place. I can move my angle ruler now. Oh, I forgot to mention you guys, before I glue this on, I did put a small chamfer, let me show you. I did this off camera but I put a very small chamfer on the bottom of this side just so it collects the dust and you know doesn't get off. So small chamfer on the bottom there. Great. So, so far we have a piece of plywood with a board set at 30 degree angle and as you can see I left a little bit of room here and I do have a chamfer, small chamfer. Now what I need to do is put a runner on it. I'm only going to put one runner and let's see, I have one here that I cut. I cut a runner from a piece of cherry and it fits into my miter slot perfectly, it does not wobble at all, does not wiggle, so it runs smoothly but it doesn't move left to right and it is just a little bit below the surface of my table. Now in order to glue it to my board I need to put uh, some shims underneath this to lift it above the table a little bit so it will make contact with my sled. For that I have another piece of cherry that is just a lot thinner and I'm gonna put that underneath and that will raise it up. Something like this. Maybe that's a little bit too thick. Let me find a thinner one. Let's try this scrap of maple. I think this is thinner. And it is. So I'm gonna put that underneath and now we're good. Now here is the point where you have to make your first decision. This jig will only cut diamond shapes of one size. And uh, for me it was one inch, one inch stock. And I like this one, I thought it was a nice proportion and that's what I went with. I made another jig where it cuts one and a half inches and I actually scrapped it because I thought it was a little bit out of proportion, it was too big. So that was an experiment, keep with the one inch. It was my preferred size, but uh, you can make the jig for any size you wanna work with. I wanna work with three quarter inch material and I want my strips of wood to be one inch wide. So that's what I'm gonna make this jig for, one inch strips. Now back to our table saw. Like I said, I have to glue that runner. And uh, because I decided I'm going to make it one inch, uh, to work with one inch material, I will move my fence now to exactly, to cut one inch strips. And you wanna be very, very precise because it will matter a lot and I'll show you when. 
And I already put the blade that I'm always going to use with this jig. What I chose is um, crosscut thin curve blade, 80 teeth, because this will give me no chipping and will give me a very clean cut. So I'm gonna leave the blade down. So my table saw fence is completely locked at exactly one inch because remember I told you I'm going to work with one inch strips and now it's time to glue that runner with my sled right against the fence, really against the fence and I need to glue it in place. For that I'll be using CA glue again. Then I'm gonna spray some activator onto my plywood on the bottom of it. And then I have to be careful when I place it down, make sure that it's really against the fence. I cut another small piece of the same material, three quarter inch, uh, you know, it's like one by four um, oak. And I'm gonna glue this one right here on the top. Same procedure. I'm gonna use some CA glue. And by the way, I'm just gonna use CA glue for today, but you can obviously reinforce all of this with some screws, make sure everything stays in and secure. I'm kind of rushing through it just because I already have these jigs, so I'm just making them to show you how to make them. So I'm gonna put this one right over here, leave a little bit of room between the fence and the material, something like that. And now I need one more piece. I'll be using a piece of this uh, maple strip. As you can see, it's very thin and it bends a little bit. So let's see, I need maybe about, about this long. I wanted to go from the back of this board that is in the back all the way uh, past the block that we put at 30 degrees. So I'm gonna cut this to size and then come back here. And this one, again, I'll be gluing just to this block. I'm not gonna glue it to this one and you will see why in a second. CA glue, some activator, and it's going to go right here, like that. All right, now I'm gonna go and pre-drill. Let me show you. I am going to pre-drill a hole somewhere here towards the back and put a small screw just to make sure it keeps this piece uh, in place. Like I showed you before, this one, it's only glued to this block. It's not glued to this block. Now, before I put this screw in, I wanna cut into my jig all the way a little bit past this board over here and then I'll put the screw just in case accidentally I'll run it over so I'll make the cut first and then I'll put in the screw. Now as you can see our jig is very simple it's just a piece of plywood this block was set at 30 degrees we put a runner on the bottom we have this other block in here and that block's purpose is just to be able to glue and screw in this little piece over here and this is like a clamp that is going to keep the piece from kicking back at us if it gets caught between the blade and the fence. So that's the purpose, purpose of this uh, piece over here. It's just like a clamp to hold the things in place. So I went and took a piece of stock that I had pre-cut. It's one inch uh, wide and it's three quarter inch thick and I'm going to start cutting some diamonds. First I'll be cutting the very corner of my uh, board and then I'll be pushing it against the fence and keep cutting pieces and you will see how this works in a second.
And this is how we get our diamond pattern. You have to make sure that you have stock that there's one inch, uh, the strips are cut at one uh, inch uh, wide. And then because we have the blade one inch away from this uh, fence and we're cutting now at 30 degrees, that will give us a perfect diamond shape. Now, how about the other two shapes? Let me show you the jig that will do the other two shapes. Now, here is the jig that will give us the other two shapes. As you can see, it's really familiar. It's almost the same thing as the other jig, but now I cut the whole jig. You see it, I cut it all the way. So we have no jig going on the other side of the blade. And we have the same block at 30 degrees. So everything is the same. I added a small block on top of this block just to use it as a handle, make it more safe to move the sled back and forward. So all I have is this 30 degree piece of material here. So how do we know exactly how to set up to get all these shapes here? Well, we already did the diamonds on the other jig. You could make it with this jig as well. If you, um, let me show you in a second. Now this one jig that is very simple is just the board with a 30 degree board uh, put this way. This jig can cut all these three shapes, but I like to have the jig that I showed you how to build to cut just the diamonds because it's a lot faster. But this one jig over here, which is a lot simpler, can cut all these three shapes. And this is the way this works. I took a block of scrap wood and I made sure that this one it's even in thickness all around it. And I put a hole in it right here and I'm going to use one of this um, um, table saw fence clamps. I'll put this in the description below. They're so, so useful. And the way they work, you just, let me just angle the camera so you can see it. So the way it works, you will put it against your fence and then this clamp goes through the hole and it clamps to your fence. That easy. And now we have a stop block. We want this stop block because if we don't have it and we have the fence so close, let's say we want to cut the diamonds. And let me take this off. Let's say we want to cut this diamond shape. Well, we know we want to cut it one inch away from the fence. So I could bring the fence really, really close. So it gives me that one inch. Let's say that's one inch over there. There you go. But now if I would cut my material like this and my pieces get jammed between the fans and the blade, well, that's a potential kickback. It will kick back. I will get hurt. So what I need to create is some space for my pieces to fall between the blade and the fence, but not get jammed in there. And this is what this block is. So again, I will clamp it and I will clamp it before the blade starts. Somewhere around here, clamp it to my fence. And now I'm going to move my fence until I get about an inch away from the blade. And there's, I don't know how to measure this, but I'll just take a quick measure like this and then I'll adjust it after if it's not right. So now if we want to cut the diamond, we would cut it like this. I'll bump it against this piece of wood. You see what I'm doing? And then I'll cut it. And now it has all this space in here to go my piece and it will not get trapped. The problem with this method though, why I like to have the other jig is once I cut two or three pieces, I'll have to completely stop my table saw to collect my pieces because if you have too many in there, they start moving around, they will get cut in the blade, they will get chipped and you know, bad things happen. So you have to cut two or three pieces and then um, stop and collect them. Now I can tell the distance between the blade and my stop. It's not exactly one inch. You see, it's not a perfect diamond. So I would need to adjust for that and try again. Now this jig over here will also cut these two shapes. And the way we do that is we have to move the fence further enough 
where when we cut a piece, you see this piece, if I cut it right now, if I just move it further and cut another slice, we will end up with this shape. But what I wanna do is flip my board and cut it. And then once I cut it, this part over here is going to be the short part, this one. I need to make sure this short part is going to be exactly one inch so it fits my diamond shapes. You see that? Anywhere you put it on the diamond, it has to be the same size with the short side of this shape. I hope that makes sense. Let's cut one and see how it works. So I flipped the board, it was like this before, and I flipped it and we'll cut one slice. And I could tell my fence was not far enough because if I take this piece that I just cut and the short part, it's quite shorter than my sides of my diamond. So that's how much I have to move my fence to the right. Now you could measure this and try to be very accurate. I just kind of eyeballed it. Let's try again. Don't forget to flip the stick and let's do this again. Now, if you really want to be exact, you should probably use calipers but this one, it's pretty much out there, you see? So we cut this shape, we cut the diamond shape. Now to do this one, we'll just move the stick to the stop block. We don't have to flip it, let's cut a slice. And now we cut that shape. And this will all go together because they all have the same angle and they all have the same size. So that's why they fit so well together. And now back to our table, you can set the diamonds to make star shapes. You can get two uh, of these shapes to make a hexagon like this. I hope you can see it. You can use two of these guys and then this guy's on the side and you can create that shape. You can create this shape over here. I use this one for this project again in here. You see, I did all of this design only using those three shapes. And uh, I did take every one of these little pieces and put a chamfer all around it. But uh, still working on this one. But the possibilities are unlimited with just three simple shapes that you can do it all on the same jig with 30 degree angle cuts. Now I hope this was helpful to you and you learned something new. Thank you so much for watching. My name is Skylar Ewing. I'll see you in my next video.